What's up, HD Church? Welcome back to HD Online again. I'm glad you're joining us for our midweek service, and I'm just thankful. I'm always thankful um, when you guys send feedback or emails or messages letting us know that God's Word is helping you and ministering to you. It blesses our hearts, and we are in a a powerful midweek series um, all about perseverance, all about overcoming adversity through faith in God's Word. And perseverance means to continue in a course of action even in the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. And that's not easy. It's not easy at all to, um, to want to continue to keep going when, when you feel like things are not changing or when you feel like difficulty just keeps coming at you or when you feel like there's no sign of success or there's, there's no finish line. You just feel like, gosh, how long is this going to last? It's hard to keep going, but God has a lot of things to say. And that's why we're talking about this. If you are taking notes, I want you to write this down. Number one is this anticipate. Okay. And when I say anticipate, um, I- I'm really talking about just like, be ready, be prepared, be aware. Um, it's not that you have a negative mindset. It's not that you're always thinking something bad is going to happen, but because God's word prepares us because Jesus tells us that in this world that we're going to have, things are going to, you know, go bad or wrong. Sometimes life is going to come against us. People, um, the enemy, the devil, your adversary is going to come against you and, um, you have to be ready for it. And one of the best ways to be ready for trouble is to anticipate it spiritually is to know that there's going to be times in my life where, um, I'm not going to have a good day or something's going to go wrong. And I want to be ready for that. And so the scripture in Proverbs chapter 22, verse three out of the passion, it says this, it says a prudent person and prudent, meaning someone that shows care or thought for the future. So somebody who's thinking about the future, a prudent person with insight foresees danger coming and prepares himself for it. There's the word. They, they, they see or they know that danger could come, but they're prepared for it. And the Bible says that, but the senseless, okay? And this is not us, church, but the senseless rush blindly forward and suffer the consequences. So you choose. Do you want to be prudent? Do you want to be prepared? Do you want to be aware? Do you want to anticipate some of the things that could go wrong in your life? Why, why is this important? Because... When something goes wrong in your life and you anticipate it, listen, your response is going to be better, especially when you have the word of God. That's why being built up is so important. When you have the word of God inside you, when your foundation is in Jesus, when you know what God's word says, man, I feel like I I say a lot of the same things over and over, but it's the truth. When your foundation is in Jesus and you know what God's word says and you anticipate when things you're you're anticipating things go wrong in your life or something happens, um, your normal reaction might be, uh, you know, being really discouraged or being down and out or wanting to quit, right? Wanting to give up. But when you anticipate with godliness, when you anticipate with the word of God, when you're prepared for that, then your reaction is godly. You're strong. You're trusting in God. You're believing the best. Um, you're, you don't want to give up, but you want to persevere. You want to move forward. That's why having the foundation in Jesus is so important. And second Thessalonians says this, um, second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three out of the ESV, it says, but the Lord is faithful. You got to tell yourself that every day. God, I know you're faithful. The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. So it's in scriptures like that where you got to tell yourself that Lord, you, you've established me. I have, I have a covenant with you. Um, I, I love you and you love me. We're in relationship together. And you said that you are faithful and you will establish me and guard me against the evil one. Guard me, help me through difficulties and trouble. But listen, church, you have to establish your foundation in Christ first. Listen, then you can anticipate and overcome what life may bring. And that's how we continue to persevere is that we're, we're anticipating, we're, we're prepared, we're ready. Not, not once again, not with a negative mindset, not that uh, you're waking up every morning and saying, oh, something bad's gonna happen. Something's gonna, no, 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 not like that. But it's more like an anticipation of you're strong in the Lord. You're strong in your faith. You believe in God. You know God is faithful. You look back to these scriptures and you say, I'm a prudent person. 
I, I, I'm showing care and thought for the future. And, and I want to have that insight. I want to have that wisdom. I want to know when, you know, when danger is coming. I want to be prepared for that. And then you look back and you say in 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, it says, But the Lord, you, you, Lord, you are faithful and you've established me and you guard me against the evil one. So we anticipate. And number two is this. We accept. Listen, we, we accept what's factual and I need to break this down so I'm going to take my time okay um, the scripture in Psalm 9 verses chapter 9 verses 9 and 10 out of the ESV it says the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed a stronghold in times of trouble here's here's God letting us know that he's faithful that um, trouble might come our way but he's telling us that, that he's our stronghold, that he holds us together, that he helps us, that he's there for us in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. And we know God's name. We know the name of Jesus. We believe in the power of Jesus. We know who God is. And so we put our trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Okay? So if you're seeking God, then I promise you, you're building your faith up. You're putting the Word of God once again inside of you. You're leaning towards God. You're believing in the Word of God. And so you're anticipating when trouble comes, right? And so this is what I mean when I say accept. So even though we see things that are in front of us, and so, for example, I'll give you a really good example. Um, when you get a bad report, okay? When you get a bad report, my my response is I'm not going to deny the bad report. Okay, I'm going to accept that. That's that's what's factual, right? But here's here's the important part about this is that God's word is truth, and the truth. Listen, the supernatural truth always trumps the natural facts. So. I hope you understand what I'm saying right here is that even though we see what's in front of us, even though we, we've accepted what's factual, it doesn't take away from us believing in the miraculous. It doesn't take away from you believing in the supernatural because, because once again, in the natural, that might be the fact, that bad report, what has gone wrong, what has happened. We, we don't deny that. I don't, I, I don't look at that and say, oh no, that's not happening. That's not happening to me. I look at that and say, okay, this is what's been presented to me. It's real. It's there. But here, here's what I know is I know that God's word is truth. And I know God says something different about my situation. And so therefore, I believe in the supernatural power of God because the supernatural power, the supernatural truth of God always trumps the natural facts in this world. And this is so important for you to understand this because you can have a peace in your mind and peace in your heart when you learn to accept um, what's factual, but you understand, right? You understand that the word of God has the last say that the Word of God trumps what's factual with the truth. And the truth is so important. The Bible says it's the truth that sets us free. And so what I always think about is that, you know, what seems impossible um, to man is never impossible with God. And this is all supernatural. You believing in God, you believing in the miraculous, you believing in the things that your mind cannot understand. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 and 4 out of the NCV, it says, You, Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust you. So trust the Lord always because He is our rock forever. So I pray, listen, my prayer right now is that you understand what I'm saying. Because what I don't want is I don't want, um, like, so for example, something goes wrong or something happens or you get a bad report and you say like, I don't receive that. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to receive the bad report. Okay. You don't have to receive that, but you need to acknowledge it. And then you need to go and say, look, I'm acknowledging, I'm acknowledging what's taking place, but listen, but listen, but I have a higher power. I have a higher source. Listen, I have a higher truth. And so now you can choose, after you've acknowledged the fact, you can choose to believe in the truth. 
And you can choose to believe in the supernatural power of God. You can choose to believe in the miraculous. You can choose to, to believe that God is still God. That He can do things that nobody else can do. So when the world and the enemy and doctors or whatever are saying, oh, it's impossible, it's impossible, it's impossible, you can always go back and say, there's nothing impossible for my God. And that's what I mean by accept. Is that right there? The next time you're facing something, okay, you don't get in denial about it. Just I acknowledge it. I, I, I understand. I know what's going on. But, but I'm putting my trust here. You, Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you. I'm depending on you, God, because they trust in you. So listen, so trust the Lord always because he is our rock forever. Oh, I love that. And my last point, quick message. Um, number three, ask. Okay. And this is not always easy. And when I say ask, I'm, I'm really talking, I'm really saying ask for help. Ask for help, church. When we talk about perseverance, when we talk about, um, you know, overcoming adversity through God's word, when we talk about continuing to push forward through difficulty in our lives, when we don't see signs of success, right? Um, I want you to know that you don't have to do it on your own. I think sometimes we think that, you know, you might be watching this and you might be thinking, I'm alone in my situation. I'm alone in my problems. I'm alone in my life. I'm alone in what I'm going through. But listen, if you learn, let me read a scripture real quick and then we'll talk about it. James 4.10 out of the NCV. Humble yourself. If you learn to humble yourself in the Lord's presence, he will honor you. And that word humility, we already know what that means. It means that I'm taking a step back. I, I'm, I'm saying, God, I can't do this on my own. I can't be strong in my own strength. I can't overcome the problems of my life on my own. So, so what do you need to do in those moments? Number one is you need to ask God for help. Listen, and number two is you need to ask others for help. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not telling you to go and tell everybody your business or certain things, maybe personal issues going on, but, but you should. If you are a believer, you should have relationships, godly relationships where you can go to others and, um, and ask them for help. There's nothing wrong with that church. There's nothing wrong. We, you know, the local church exists for this. We're in community together. We're brothers and sisters in the faith. We, we need each other and we exist to help one another. And so when you're, when you're humble in, in yourself and in your life and you're, listen, and you're laying down your pride, you're saying that I'm not going to be prideful in my life. I'm not going to pretend that I can, that I'm Superman or Superwoman on my own and that I can overcome all my problems on my own. And then all, and, and here's another, here's another thing that you might um, get confused about where you just say, well, well, I just need God. Okay, and that is true. You do need God, but God has given us so much wisdom through His Word where He tells us, no, 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 you need people. You need each other. You need community. You need faith together. You need somebody that's going to help you, that's going to maybe pull you out of that dark place, that's going to encourage you in your time of need, that's going to build you up when you feel like you've been broken. They're going to be there to pray with you, to lift you up, to help you. Listen, it is so important. Ask for help. There's nothing wrong with it. And I know our pride, it gets the best of us at times because we're, we're embarrassed. Um, you know, I've been, um, I've been talking with uh, some friends of mine that, that I've known for a really long time. And, and there's, there's just some things going on um, in their lives right now. And they've been going through a, a, a very dark and difficult season they're believers in the lord they love the lord but they've been going through one of the hardest seasons of their lives and um they just asked me to just just talk with them to hang out with them to hear them and and you know i think about that and i think that takes so much humility it takes so much humility to not be embarrassed about what's going on but to say look we need help we just need someone to listen. We need someone to, to chime in. We need someone to, you know, maybe give us some advice or some wisdom. Um, and th that's okay. And that's what I want you to understand when it comes to persevere. I don't want you to think that, oh, man, Pastor Eric, man, he's telling us how to persevere and this is how we do it. But I don't want you to think that you have to do it on your own. You don't. 
your faith in God and with those um, that you surround yourself. That's why I tell you, church, all the time, surround yourself with, with good, godly people, people that are going to love you, people that you trust, people that are not going to judge you, people that are going to pray with you and lift you up and build you up and help you um, get back to a good place in your relationship with the Lord. The Bible says this in Proverbs 29, 23. It says, pride will ruin people. And we know that already. Pride will ruin people, but those who are humble will be honored. And I like this. And the Bible says that a lot, that God, um, he opposes the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. The Bible says that those that humble themselves before the Lord, that God exalts them. And this is what you want. I promise you, you want more grace. You want God to exalt you. You want God to honor you in your life, but you got to be humble, church. You got to put down your pride and, and, and listen, trust me, it's okay to ask for help. You're not strong enough to do life on your own, and that's okay. Humble yourself before God, listen, and allow others to help you in times of difficulty. I pray that this message has ministered to you. Don't forget we um, are back on Sundays. You are more than welcome to join us if you feel comfortable. Now, now I'm going to say it again. I, I pray that you haven't gotten too comfortable and you're and you're and you're just not coming because you don't want to come now those there's those of you that that don't feel like you don't feel comfortable enough yet to be here and I'm and that's totally okay but I'm talking to some of you that maybe you just haven't come because you are just too comfortable and what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to trade your commitment for convenience so Join us. We are having good services. We're having a good time. We're getting ready um, for Palm Sunday. We're getting ready for Easter Sunday. And we are going to honor and, um, and just praise and seek God and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus um, over the next couple weeks. Love you guys. Let's pray over today's offering and today's message. Father, I thank you, Lord. Um, your word is always good. It's rich. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. Um, I pray, Lord, that you can continue to just build us up, God. Strengthen us. Help us persevere, Lord. Help us move forward in our lives, God. Whatever it is that's going on, whatever difficulty we are facing, whatever difficulty um, those that are watching are facing, I'm praying for them right now. I'm lifting them up, Lord, to you. I pray that they hear your word and they begin to apply it and do it in their lives, Lord. I thank you for everyone that has given or that is going to give and to support um, this ministry, God. HD Church, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for them. Continue to bless them, enrich them in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.